Hey friends, welcome back to Skill Builder Zone. In today's video, we will be seeing what a architect, a solution architect, or a platform architect uses, uh, in you know, uh, to create his diagrams, the architecture diagrams that act, that's the actual responsibility of a platform or a you know solution architect. So how he does it, how he creates it. Uh, in this video, I'll show you one of the diagrams that I have just created for the sake of this video. And I'll also explain uh, in the same, you know, using diagrams, uh, explain how uh, it actually works and how it will, how you can just use that diagram to create, uh, you know, write your Terraform or use that to create all your uh, infrastructure or your Azure resources. So uh, before I deep down, uh, deep dive into the video, uh, this is this is just a series that we are starting. This will be focus on what an actual uh, architect does uh, what are the responsibilities what he you know needs to go through uh, in a day to day life uh, the different hats that he has to wear some day he is a data engineer some day he is a cloud engineer some day he is a devops engineer but uh, as a whole he is uh, the solution architect or a platform architect or a, you know cloud architect in general so yeah let's let's get started i will show you an open source tool that I'm using to create all my you know diagrams but uh, there are lots of uh, just like tools available people go with uh, Microsoft's Visio or you can go with Lucidchart uh, but here I'm using draw.io which is open source and very popular and I do like it because it has everything that you would need uh, very intuitive very user friendly and you can do almost everything that you would like to do uh, so let's get started this is a series that we are starting so this is just the first video uh, it's kind of a trailer kind, kind of a glimpse through what you can achieve using uh, you know the series but uh, yeah you will have to go through the step-by-step uh, -step tutorials that we will be bringing out but for today it's just a trailer on what's possible in the world of draw.io uh, as a tool to create your cloud infrastructure diagrams or on-prem diagrams or any any diagrams any flowcharts or anything that you want to create you can uh, do that in draw.io so let's get started so if you see my screen i have created this diagram for azure this is just a simple hub spoke topology diagram where i wanted to have a secured connectivity to my azure sql database or a function app and how that can be achieved so when you are going to create these kind of diagrams you need to first be aware of all the resources or you know as as an architect you need to be you know updated in terms of what are the new features that's coming with the resource or what are the you know uh, options available in terms of security uh, what are the best practices so most of the time you your work will revolve around implementing the best practices uh, making sure the entire architecture that you're building or the infrastructure that you're building is secure if you are uh, you know a platform engineer you're building a platform you need to make sure that everything you know works together in a very you know secure manner and so yeah this this is a diagram for just a hub spoke topology uh, if you see this is my hub uh, hub vnet this is the hub vnet it has got multiple subnets uh, this is my on premises a proper user sitting on his laptop or an office a corporate network or an express route uh, you know connected to the office so we can have a point to site or site to site or express route these are the vpn options in my hub vnet we have got multiple subnets uh, for the firewall if you need a firewall uh, then the inbound and outbound subnet for your azure private dns resolver uh, gateway subnet that's for your vnet uh, gateway a subnet that i've created like this is like my way of having a dedicated subnet for any resources that i would need in hub network so the private endpoints for those will sit in this subnet a subnet for uh, DevOps so what I do usually is I have all my shared resources in the hub and that's actually one of the best practices to all your shared resources for example uh, 
if you are having container instances that host your self-hosted agent uh, if that sits in your hub network it, you will be able to use a single agent to deploy in any of the spokes so that's one of the best practices to have all your shared resources in your hub so you can you know without creating multiple resources you can just route through multiple spokes uh, this is vnet paired with a spoke vnet this is a spoke subscription and this is where uh, my resources reside so for example if you know if i join if i uh, want to create a platform from scratch first thing i would do is i would create this hub and spoke topology i'll carve out all the vnet address spaces that i would need uh, make sure that it doesn't overlap with any of the existing uh, you know infrastructure ip address range uh, be it corporate or be it in azure aws gcp anywhere uh, if i want to join this to corporate network i need to make sure that this ip uh, address is unique and doesn't you know overlap with any of the existing ones so that's one of the prerequisites when you start building these diagrams and have informal you know have a detailed uh, visualization of what you're actually going to build so for this particular diagram uh, the spoke has a sql server a function app uh, have they have their private endpoints created in a again i always like to have a private endpoint subnet and that's where all my private endpoints sit uh, there are uh, obviously uh, times when your private endpoints cannot share the subnet so in those cases you will have your dedicated ones but uh, in case in most of the times for uh, the you know the uh, resources i usually create a single private endpoint subnet and then my storage account or my function app my sql server most of most of them have their private endpoints created in that subnet and then so this this is a high this is the diagram this is a finished product uh, you can use this to create you know multiple uh, hub spoke topology uh, this this is also the uh, heart of this azure landing zone that you would have heard so all, all these you know well architected fr framework that talks about is utilizing all uh, all the resources that you have in hand in the best way in the best to achieve your goal so this one uh, can be used anywhere uh, if you are building a landing zone if based you know uh, architecture for your organization you build your uh, you build a proper subscription with connectivity that's where your hub vnet sits that's where uh, you all your connectivity devices if you have a dns dns servers that you know if you want to have your own uh, uh, virtual machines that host your dns servers they can sit in that so all of those uh, you know shared resources uh, networking resources will sit in your uh, connectivity sub uh, connectivity sub will have the hub vnet and uh, if you follow the azure landing uh, zones you can we will go through this go through that uh, in later video but for today we are just going through this basic hub spoke and uh, and yeah uh, in future videos we'll be going through the azure landing zones as well this spoke hosts my resources and you can have multiple spokes this hub so the resource the, the actual user connects to the sub sorry the connect connects to the hub subscription uh, using a virtual uh, you know vpn or or express route or whatever the moment he lands here the dns resolvers will take care of all the private endpoints a properly configured uh, azure platform or your azure uh, subscriptions uh, Azure infrastructure will route everything from hub to the spokes. So what will happen is you will be able to use uh, you know just all the private endpoints securely connect to any resources in your spokes. Uh, for example, if this if this is if if you see my screen, if this is a application that has got dev test prod subscriptions. If this is a dev test prod subscriptions and they want uh, an isolated environment then you have three different subscriptions three different vnets all joined you know peer to the hub and then your private dns zones all, all the you know prop, uh, all the uh, private dns zones private dns resolver uh, vnet uh, 
gateway, virtual network gateway, all of those sit in hub. You don't need to spend money on you know multiple uh, gateways, multiple uh, private resolvers. So everything goes from hub to the spoke, and then you your DNS queries get resolved. See how it actually resolves. If we this is another diagram, like a flow diagram that you can create using these uh, this tool. Uh, very useful. I mean, you, you can like there is endless amount of things that you can do with uh, this draw.io. We will go in detail one by one from basic till advanced. We will do everything. Uh, but for today, if you see this simple flow diagram that I've created, it is very easy to understand if you have things in you know uh, visualized. It, it is very easier to understand if if you go and read an entire book where they just talk about the DNS as well, but without diagrams, I will, at least for me, I will not understand anything. For this one, if you see uh, the above diagram that we have seen, how the DNS resolution takes place, like if this user wants to connect to this SQL database, and he opens SQL Server Management Studio, he gives the host name, yeah, and if he uses multi-factor authentication with AAD, uses that, connects, connects fine if the infrastructure is properly configured but when if he can you know uh, if he is able to uh, connect successfully then that means the dns resolution was perfect and i mean it it resolved fine and he was able to connect to the private endpoint uh, all the public endpoints are disabled so there is no public endpoint for any resources everything is connected privately so how does that DNS resolution take place? Like how does the DNS query flow? For example, he is suppose in the office and the office is connected via a site-to-site -site VPN to the hub. So, uh, he logs in to his machine uh, connected to, you know, uh, so that is site-to-site, -site. the corporate network is site-to-site -site, uh, VPN into our hub. He opens SQL Server Management Studio, he types the SQL Server name, uses uh, the user DNS query. It goes to the on-prem DNS server, so the on-prem, the office or, or the entire you know, on-prem infra will have a DNS server. So in that DNS server, there will be something called conditional forwarding. Uh, so in conditional forwarding, you will use, for in, if, if you see the above uh, picture, According to that, if if there is something called inbound IP for an Azure private DNS resolver and in your conditional forwarding on your on-premises, you will use a star.database.windows.net and you will give you know the in, inbound IP and once you do that, every uh, query that uh, is generated in the corporate network will go to the on-prem DNS server if there is a match for a database.windows.net and it, then it knows where it needs to go to search for that so it goes straight to Azure Private DNS Resolver so if you see our diagram he does the query the on-prem DNS server says okay yeah I found that where, where, so where do I need to go to look for it it will be in the inbound you know inbound there will be a private IP for the Azure Private DNS Resolver in that it will go there and the Azure Private DNS Resolver will go and look for Azure Private DNS Zones so if you see this Azure Private DNS Zones there will be multiple Azure Private DNS Zones that you will create which will be like private link dot database dot windows dot net and in that you will have a, a record for your database which will be SQL Server 1 and the private IP that your SQL Server has for this private endpoint you will have that as a DNS record so Azure Private DNS Resolver goes to Azure Private DNS Zone and that Azure Private DNS Zone will have a virtual network link to the spokes and it will say okay yes I found this and that's how the entire resolution will work so that's I think that's that's all for today uh, if you found this video useful please do subscribe and do like this video because it helps you know uh, for more visibility and yeah that that should be it for today 
catch you in the next video where we start the series on uh, you know uh, Ar architecture diagram tools uh, we will be using draw.io an open source tool thanks for watching and keep supporting